He was interested in the science of electricity, whereas it really was a laboratory trick used to entertain students. So the flipping of the different contacts from either normal open to normal close, this is just like We go to the, the previous slide, the previous uh, uh, graphic that we saw. This is 24 volt DC relay. So we have to supply this coil with a 24 volt DC in this case. Once we feed this coil, the contacts are the, the relay coil is going to energize, and then we change all these contacts here. So as you can see here, we have A pole and we have A pole. So both poles are all the same pole. In this case, I'll say they are all light poles. So as we know, the law of magnetism, it says that light poles repels while on light pole attract. So if we have both light poles, they are going to repel. They are not going to attract each other. So what happens now here, if we fit sufficient voltage, the coil of this relay, after going through the previous uh, graphic, we saw 24 volt in this case, so we now fit our coil with 24 volt DC. In this case, now we energize the coil and then changes this pole, this pole A to pole B, which becomes an unlike pole. So unlike pole and like pole now we attract. By attracting means these two contacts will now move to each other by changing the NC to NO and changing the NO to NC. So these contacts now are going to change due to magnetization of the coil. We move now how to test a relay. Test a measurement, measuring instrument first. So you're going to test the measuring instrument. You open, put on continuity, you open. There should be no beeping. And then we put the two props together, you should get a beeping. So testing a relay. When during normal close contacts. So we are testing now the normal close contacts. So no actuation to the mechanical coil actuator. So we have not pressed this green button, like we did call the uh, mechanical coil actuator. Once there is no press at this point, what happens is we will not get our normal close contact. So we'll get our relay will be beeping at this point. So to ensure that we've tested from the, the, the common, so we'll now have the, com the common will be here. This is a common and this is normal close and normal open. So we test this contact and this contact to ensure that we have continuity. Then we will now move now to this graphic to say we have a normal close contact. So this contact at the top will be the normal close contact when you test it with the common. So action on mechanical core actuator. Once you press this button, we will have the contacts now open since we are testing for normal close contact. The same way now we move to the set of contact, which is down, as you can see. We will now check for normal open contact, no action on the mechanical coil actuator. We will get the result as such. And then action on the mechanical coil actuator will have the result as such. So we now move to three pole mechanical release, which is a contactor, the Washington Macaulay Enterprises. Please do like, share, subscribe, and keep sharing, as well as turn on the notification button so that anytime we upload a new video, you're going to be notified. And thanks for watching and keep watching. This is a contactor. So it has a coil, A1, A2, mechanical coil actuator, this green part, which when we press it, it will now flip all our contacts. This is a three pole. So we have A, L1, L2, and L3. And then we have our NO, contact, which is 13, 14. So this is like an additional block or auxiliary block, which is embedded with the contactor. So when we press this contact here, all these contacts are going to close and the normal open as well is going to close. So we have current leaving from the upstream going to the downstream. So I'll take you us now to a graphic, which is a practical structure of a contactor. you are going to see how this contactor functions. The same way we have Pole A and pole A, A pole, A pole. So all are light poles. Light poles all repel while on light poles attract. So this is these are all light poles. They all repel each other. So we have this piston which move 
back and forth or extending and retracting due to the spring. So we have a mechanical coil actuator here. So once we press this, it will push the spring down, thereby extending the piston. So when we remove our hand from the mechanical coil actuator, the piston now retracts back on its own by the help of the spring. So we have our three poles here, L1, L2, and L3. We have our NO contact and NC contact. In this case, I've now provided an NC contact, which is an additional block or auxiliary block. So we have our coil here, A1 and A2. So if we go through the same process that we did while we were looking at our single pole relay to know exactly what is the amount of voltage to fit the coil, the same way we are going to do while we are going through our contactors as well, our three pole relays. So if we go through, we are going to see exactly what amount of voltage should be, should be supplied to the coil. So in the case, probably we have maybe 240 volts to be supplied to the coil. So we are going to fit it to the coil, energizes the coil. It now turns this A pole to on light pole, which will attract with the light pole. So once it attract with the light pole now, it will move this piston or extend the piston. By so doing, it will close all this contact. As you can see, these contacts are all attached to the piston. So as it's moving, to the, to the left side, it now closes the contacts. So we have current now flowing from upstream going to downstream. The same way, it closes the auxiliary contact of 1314, and the current will move now from upstream going to downstream. And then it opens the contact 2122 to normal open contact. Basically, this is how a contactor functions. So I'll take us now to a practical example of a contactor. So we have this contactor. It's a contactor. So I will show us the different components so we get to understand. So if we look at the back, we'll see um, this is A2 contact for the coil, how we're going to fit the coil. And then we have A1 and A2 from this other side of the contactor. So when we identify how many volts should be fed to the relay coil, we'll see that we have a 240 volt which should be fed to this relay coil of the contactor. So what will happen now is, if we fit the coil, this contact, this, this portion, which we saw in the, our graphic, which was green, in this case, this is white. So it's going to move down, thereby closing all this contact from the upstream and the downstream, we'll have now current flowing from up, going to down. This is very important. So we have a spring inside, which permits the extension and retraction of the piston, which is inside, which is pushing and then causing the contacts to all close, as you can see. So our open inside, so we get to see what is inside. So we have a spring. So you can see, I will move from top. So this is a coil. This is a coil, as you can see. This is a coil. And they have, we have our wires, which is coming now to these terminals to fit the coil. So we can either fit it at A1, A2, which is at this side, or we flip it and connect from A1 to A2, which is this, on this other side. So the coil now will be energized. So we now put it back inside. It goes this way. And then we have our spring. As you can see, this is a spring which is now connected to the piston. As you can see, in this case, this is a piston that permits these contacts now to close and allow current to flow from the upstream going to the downstream, the same way to the auxiliary contact or the additional block. So this is the piston. So this piston now, we connect our spring to it so that it permits the extension and the retraction by the help of the spring. 
um, this video is um, just to give us an understanding on how the relay function and it'll take us also to an understanding on the relay so we know exactly how the relay functions. Okay, I'm gonna share my screen again. So we'll see the practical aspect of the relay. Okay. As you can see here, yeah, I'll get a relay. In this case, this is a relay. I'll take a single pole relay so we get to understand how it functions. So I get my the power component. I connect it over here. So if I fit the coil, if I fit the coil, now what happens? I now give power to the, to the coil, see what happens, the contact closes. Okay, for us to see it very well, I will now remove this component and then I'll remove this portion and put a switch over here. So if I put a switch here, get a switch, and then I connect here. This is a switch I connect here now. Okay, I've connected the switch here. So if we see now here, we will notice that I put on the power supply, the contact is open. So when I close the switch, the coil energizes and closes contact to allow current now to flow from this point to this other point. So look at what happens. I close, this contact closes. Okay, now I bring in a light bulb. I'll bring a light bulb. So we'll be able to understand how this functions. So I bring a light bulb, I connect it over here. Continue. I connect this to this part. I'll switch off the power supply first and then remove this, this cable that I connected here. So we will have, once this coil is energized, what happens is, it to suffice that this contact will now take current and pass it over to this other point in order to put on this light on. So what I'll do now here is I'll connect this portion and then connect this now to my neutral. And then I connect this to my face. Put on now my power supply. It's on. So now when I flip my switch on, the bulb is on, as you can see. So basically this is how a relay function. We will now keep doing more exercises so we get to understand exactly how a relay function and then to know how we can use it in our different designs. Thanks so much. And to them, we are watching Macogai Enterprises.